Today, we're going to be making paper marble coasters. You will need pieces of paper, tape, and scissors. I recommend also having a pencil and a ruler, but it's not required. If you have cardstock, you could use that instead of regular paper, but I know it's harder to come by, so I'll show you how to build most of the tracks using just regular paper. For those of you that do have cardstock, you'll need to cut your paper into long strips. Each strip will need to be 2 and 1 8 inches wide. You could measure this using a ruler, but an easier way might be to take a regular sheet of paper folded into fourths. Just trace your regular piece of paper three times and you should have four long strips. To make a basic straight track out of a regular sheet of paper, you'll need to fold your sheet of paper on the long side in half two times. I recommend using a ruler to help measure your railings for your basic track. Measure 15 millimeters from each side. Make sure you draw them on both ends of your strip and then connect your dots together. Once you've drawn the guidelines to help you fold, it helps to turn it upside down and have the lines on the bottom of your paper. Fold up each edge until it's in the shape of a track. You can connect multiple tracks together simply by sliding them inside of each other. For an angled track, use a pair of scissors to cut across the railings on your track. Then, fold the middle section forward and back to make sure that it can bend properly. Put tape over the sides of the overlapping rails to connect your two tracks together. If you want to have an angled track, just use tape to hold your track in the correct position. It's important to test your track because if the angle doesn't work well, you could always pull off the tape and try again. When you build a curved track, you'll start out with the same basic pattern that you used for the straight track. Flip your track upside down so you can see your lines. It helps to use a ruler to make evenly spaced marks all the way down the length of your track. On my track, I drew my guidelines about one inch apart. I drew my guidelines across one railing and the center track. I did not draw my guideline across the other railing. Make sure to cut very carefully across your guidelines so you don't cut across the final rail. It helps to bend each section of your curved track backwards so it will turn easily when you're trying to make your curved formation. When you've adjusted your curved track into the shape that you want it, use tape to cover the gaps in the bottom of your track and the sides. I found it helpful to use a bowl to hold my track in place while I taped all the pieces down.
Make a hill. You'll start out with the same basic straight track formation that you used before. Decide where you want your hill to be and then make marks along the railings. If your hill is going to be on a flat surface, I recommend building hill supports to place underneath your hill so it will stay in the right spot. Fold a regular sheet of paper into thirds and then use one of your strips. You'll fold your strip in half two times to make a triangular shape. Be sure to fold your structure so that the two ends overlap. Unfold your structure temporarily to trace the edges to trace the width of your track. Then, cut slits so your rail can fit in the empty space. To connect two rails to make a 90 degree turn, build a connecting piece like this. First, fold your paper lengthwise into fourths. Then, take another piece of paper that has already been folded into fourths and fold your piece of paper until it's the same size. When you open your paper up again, you should have a four by five grid. You'll need a two by three sized piece to build this next piece. Use your pencil to draw a down across down pattern on your paper and cut it out with a pair of scissors. You should now have a small three square section. Mark 15 millimeter railings, just like you would for a normal straight track. Holding your railing into place helps you recognize where you need to make your cuts and have the pieces overlap. If you want to build a hill with greater articulation or even a loop-de-loop, -loop, you can do this by starting with a basic straight track. Make symmetrical cuts across the railings on both sides. The loop-de-loop -loop formation is one of the hardest shapes to put together. You'll have to overlap your pieces just right in order to get it to work.
build stairs. You can use the same basic track formation that you used to build the loop-de-loop. -loop. This time, you'll need to fold each section in an alternating pattern, like a fan. When you fold up your railing, use tape to hold the overlapping sections down together. Make your vortex. Find something circular to trace. After you cut out your circle, you'll need to find out where the approximate center is. You could fold your circle into fourths or just fold the paper that you cut out. Sometimes it helps to not fold the actual circle so you don't have extra lines running across your vortex getting in the way of the marble. Use your pencil to draw a circle big enough for a marble to fall through. If you end up making your circle too small, it's okay. You can just cut it out slightly bigger the next time you cut it. Once your hole is big enough, Overlap the two sides of your circle, making it into a funnel shape. tends to fall off, you can always add a railing around your vortex. To build cylindrical scaffolds, just take a regular piece of paper and roll it up. Add tape across the middle and near the sides. Use a pair of scissors to cut four legs out across the bottom. tape to secure your scaffold against the floor. Be sure to put the tape as close to the standing scaffold structure as possible. If you happen to have cardstock, you could use it to help you build your triangular scaffold because creating such tiny folds will be very tricky with a piece of paper that's already been folded four times. You'll need to fold your paper in half twice to create your triangular formation. Remember to take your last piece and overlap the two ends together. For a rectangular scaffold, you'll also need to fold your paper in half two times. 
but this time you won't have any overlapping pieces. You're going to take your two ends and tape them together. If you're having a hard time getting the legs of your scaffold to come out evenly, you might want to try using a dry erase marker to put a dot on your pair of scissors. Cut to the same point every single time and you should have legs that come out approximately the same size. There are different ways to plan how to put your pieces together, but I find that I have the best results when I put my track together starting from the bottom and then add on pieces until I get to a top. I want to make sure that my marbles roll correctly every step of the way, which requires a lot of trial and error to get it right. So for me, it's easier to start from the bottom. Every time you add a new piece, you may need to make adjustments to your track. Just be patient and try again and again until it comes out just the way you want.